Hi, I'm Matt. And I'm Tom. And this is the Park Bench. And I passed out on a centrifuge. Why? <laughs> Don't, why were you even there? <laughs> I figured we should cut, we should cut the intro on this one. Um, yeah. So I am still working with the RAF Starship project, which is uh, their STEM outreach project, mm. uh, which again, I'm going to thoroughly plug. That was not a sponsored video, no money changed hands or anything like that, but they gave me a ride in a centrifuge. <laughs> and yes. Um, so I'm still working with them. They are still trying to get people, uh, and specifically folks who ha uh, with a younger audience, uh, to go watch their stuff. And I'm one of the people they've picked, uh, along, with, along with folks from uh, the Great British Bake Off, a couple other folks as well, all doing stuff. And I, I got to be, in a reference that will be lost on the majority of people watching, I get to be the John Noakes. <laughs> Was that a Blue Peter presenter? Yes! Before my time. Yeah, before my time as well. Um, <laughs> They're okay, fine. Because he had the reputation for going and doing the stuff that looked risky or dangerous or uh, involved passing out in a thing. Okay. And apparently that's what I do now. <laughs> um, it's, it's something I didn't want to turn down. Yeah. Because it, that, like, it's not the nicest thing I've ever done. But that, far, that Fandra centrifuge, uh, like, I've, seen it, I've seen it in TV stuff growing up. Um, it's been there since 1955. Um, it's getting replaced soon. I'm not um, surprised. It, it looks like it's been there a while. Yeah, so that we... That would look 50s, 60s to we, me. We got there, and I think we've got a couple of shots of the outside, and it's on, on a road called Centrifuge Way. Hey. Um, Centrifuge Way! <laughs> <laughs> but the entire base around it is gone. It is oh. sitting in the middle of a brand new housing estate. It's really Really? Straight. Yeah. But they haven't built the I new guess centrifuge. Because it's on an old air base that they don't need anymore because right. we used to have way too many. Yeah. Well, well, <laughs> we used to have just enough. <laughs> Some might say. <laughs> we used to have enough for the time. Um, so that's still there, but it's getting decommissioned soon. And the new one uh, is being built as a simulator. So it's a full three axis simulator mm. on the end of a centrifuge arm that can go zero to eight Gs in half a second. Oh, sorry, it's not built, built as a simulator, it's built with a simulator in it. With a simulator okay. on the end of the, okay, yeah, of the arm. Because um, then you can be in a cockpit and doing yeah. the things, rather uh, than just sitting. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, this is, you know... If it's My favourite thing one. about it, by the way, yeah. is that it's designed to look like a cockpit from the olden times. Yes! Yeah, of course <laughs> like, it is. With, like, the big windows yeah. and the, oh, the lead-lined windows, like yeah. you get on old houses. <laughs> yeah, the, the new one has none of that. The new one is, is a simulator. But this was built in the 50s, so there was no closed circuit TV back then. The reason that there is a medical officer sat in the middle watching you spin around is because that's how they kept an eye on the person to see if they passed out. <laughs> that's, that's what they did. The, the first few weeks on that job, they must get a bit dizzy. <laughs> I, I don't know. He certainly didn't seem to be, but he's had a lot of experience yeah. uh, doing that. So, uh, And I was the first in it. From this. So you, uh, the first thing you see in the video is uh, Marcus, who is RAF engineer, pulling six and a half G, and he is wearing um, he's wearing uh, a G suit. Well, I've said this before; they're basically inflatable trousers. Yeah. So plugs them into a, a compressed air generator in the centrifuge. Uh, when it goes over three G or so, like a full lower body tourniquet hits it. Because e e even though the centrifuge is spinning around like that, and you're facing into it. It tilts, so then the G-force goes down towards your feet. Yes, it's fight. This is fighter jet G-force, not rocket launch G-force. So it's, um, it's pushing all of your blood down becomes towards your feet, even though you're facing the wrong way. Yes, and that means all of the blood's rushing towards your feet, and then the blow-up trousers are to stop that yep. happening. So you've still got some left in your heart. Yes, and lungs and brain and brain. Um, the other capsule of the centrifuge on the other side. It's one of the few that has two capsules, two medical officers if, you, if they want. They don't do that anymore, but they could train two people at a time. <laughs> the other one is configured for the other type of G-force. I can't remember what the axis is, but that is the lying down, rocket launch, everything. Eyes on, in G-force. Eyes then. in G-force, okay. that's it. Uh, so, yeah, M Marcus, has, I don't think he's pulled six and a half before in a centrifuge. He was... He was it, it was interesting watching him after I'd come out because you could see every time the, the medical officer was like, all right, that was, that was four, uh, do you want to go to, uh, to six? And you can clearly see the hesitation, brief bit of hesitation, like, this is going to be really unpleasant. 
but I am an RAF. I'm in the <laughs> RAF. There are many people watching me. We're going for this. <laughs> he did not pass out. He, he'd been trained on the, the breathing manoeuvre a lot better than I had. Um, but that was after I got out. Um, we filmed pretty much all my stuff that did not involve running in the centrifuge first. Yeah. Because... Just in case. Yeah. It, it, I need to stress... Gave you the willies. Well, <laughs> so I need to stress, the RAF uh, and the medical team there do not deliberately try to G-lock anyone. G-lock is, is loss of consciousness, LOC. They deliberately try not to do that because even though it is low risk and it is not a big deal, it's still losing consciousness and you don't <laughs> deliberately try and get it. So I think everyone... With the possible exception of the medical officer who was paying attention to me uh, and just going, you know what, maybe let's not push to 4.5 right now. I think with the exception of him, everyone, myself included, was surprised when I went. Um, now, the f yeah. uh, you had told me that you were going there. Yes. Or at least p possibly going there if yeah. it all came through. Uh, and the next thing I knew was on the day, I just get a Snapchat up here. Uh, and fumble with, I'm not good at Snapchat, I fumble with it to open it up and the first thing I do when I press my phone is see just a video of my friend passing out and looking half dead. I thought now, I'd that was context, yeah. a horrific thing. Like, you might have done, I yeah. skip the amount of times I try and look at someone's Snapchat <laughs> and it's just not there anymore. Yeah. I probably skipped anything you sent before, but that was a little harrowing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I watched it on the tube as well. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone around me so. <laughs> I suppose people scroll past stuff worse than that on Facebook these days. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the first, uh, the first run, actually, the centrifuge did an emergency stop. So I, I got in, was strapped in, five-point harness, um, everything like that, and I'm nervous. More nervous, I think, than I was for a couple of the, the aerial things, because I know this is designed to be sustained, and it's not designed to be pleasant. Mm. And I know there's an emergency stop button that they can hit, and I can just say the words stop or down, 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 or anything like that. He'll hit the E stop button, it'll be over. So emergency stop means stopping the G rather than stopping the spinning? Yes. It drops you, it goes down to a safe speed, so it just feels like you sat on the thing spinning rather than being pushed. Yes. Because okay. um, emergency stop, that is a fast thing to stop. Oh yeah, yeah, but I think E stop is brakes on as hard as they go. Okay. That's what they hit when I went unconscious. Because then, then you'll, you'll pull full G if it stops. When you hit unconscious, it was still spinning? Yes. So that's not a stop? Uh, when I went unconscious, person in the middle will have hit the emergency stop button, yeah. and it will slow the centrifuge as fast as possible. Slow uh, the centrifuge in as little time as possible. Okay. There we go. What I was trying to work out is if an emergency stop button meant you would have pulled more Gs because you were slamming into a brick wall. Ah, no. But in a different axis. <laughs> no, okay, no. E, e stop means you pull about minus one, one and a half Gs per second of jerk. Okay. And you go 3.6, 2, 1.5, 1. Okay. Yeah. Um, but the first one, the centrifuge pulled that on, uh, did that on its own. So I set off and um, we get, uh, I'm doing my bit to camera. And it gets, oh, okay, right, I'll keep doing my script, keep doing my script. Oh, oh, oh. What happened? Safety mechanism trip, right? So we just sit there for 10 minutes, just kind of <laughs> chatting with the medical officer. Uh, who's very good at putting my, uh, my nerves uh, at ease. And then we just do a 2G run. The control system is entirely analog. There are no uh, microelectronics in there at all because the system was built in the 50s. It's still all on very manual automated controls that are a bit like a vinyl player. Okay. Um, and that's, that's how it runs. I think the, the team have, oh, again, all the behind the scenes footage you're seeing was shot by the RAF uh, and Starship team uh, and the film crew there. So I haven't bothered to grade it or anything like that. If it looks, if it looks dark and a bit uh, uncolored, that's it's all raw off the camera. It's unprocessed. Yes. Um, we start going and we just pull two Gs for as long as it takes me to get my script out. And that is not unpleasant. It's it's not a big deal, 2G. 2G is it, is it a bit of a hurt, but not a hurt? Yeah, 2, 2G is like the strongest acceleration you've ever had in a car. Okay. Like you've been in a sports car and someone's put their foot down, you've gone, oh! But instead of, oh, it's, oh! oh. It's down ooh, not back ooh. Yes. Because <laughs> a car, you go, you shrink that way. In, yes. In the G you're experiencing, you shrink that way. From, a, from my perspective, it's difficult to tell the difference. It just feels like I'm a lot heavier than I was. Yeah. But yeah, the, the blood is going this way. Yeah. Um, but that's fine. I'm still, I'm still okay with that. And then we start to pull a couple of 3.6 G runs, which are some of the speed ups and slowdowns you see in the, in the smaller bit. 
And that's when I started to realize that maybe I'm not cut out for this. <laughs> because the very first one, um, it's like getting, you know that thing where you get out of bed too quickly and all the blood hasn't quite got up to your head yet and you have, you go so, oh, and then you're back. I don't know about bed, but I've run up the stairs and then bent down to pick something up and gone back up again. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of head rush of, <laughs> oh. you fallen down. <laughs> but, it, and I, I got one of those. And it wasn't a complete pass out or anything like that. It was clear, oh, no, my eye is just, and what I think, I thought I was having read out. What I, I heard what you I, say that on the video, which surprised me. No, I said grey out. Grey out is when you start getting a bit of tunnel vision. Yeah. Uh, and I definitely got that. At one point, I thought I was getting read out, which doesn't make sense. But I looked at it and I'm just struggling, uh, looking at the footage, what's happening is I just don't realise how heavy my eyelids are. Uh. And literally I'm going, my eyes are open. Why, why, aren't, why, why can't I see? My, oh no, my eyelids are just so heavy that I'm not putting enough effort into keeping my eyes open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. At which point I think the medical officer has realised that I should not go above 4G. <laughs> um, and we do that a couple of times. And I try and raise my arms up. And each time my response is getting a little bit slower. And then we try and do it with the full strain manoeuvre. So mm. there are three things I need to do. I need to push against the rudder paddles that are in front of my feet. So pressure down. I need to tense everything from here downwards. Mm. And I need to do, I think... I'm not sure if it is, but it's certainly a variant on the Valsalva manoeuvre, which is you close your throat, you breathe in, close your throat, and <coughs> pressure as much as you can here to squeeze everything, keep your heart going, keep the blood coming up. Okay. So you're tensing your muscles, so using your muscles to squeeze your blood yeah. vessels. Yeah. Everything, keep the blood up to the head, stay conscious. Ah, uh, didn't, didn't work. <laughs> didn't, didn't remotely work. So, uh, it's the first time you tried it, though. <laughs> and you probably, you probably didn't have too long to, to be shown it anyway. If you, no. It's an action-packed day for filming. And so you see, uh, you see I'll, I'll show the footage again. You see me take four breaths. Then the lights go off. They stop the centrifuge. And I uh, come back up with some convulsions. And then the lights come back on. Uh, and now you're going to see that again. Uh, just with appropriate music dubbed over it. <laughs> Still not nice to see you no, in that position in no, the slightest, I but I'm laughing. <laughs> I don't remember it. Um, no, you passed out. <laughs> yeah, but I passed out way earlier than it looks. I have no memory from the first breath. I remember going, <gasps> and then everything was wobbly, yeah. and then the centrifuge stopped. And it's a continuous track in my head. Huh. It's absolutely continuous. I would not have thought I've passed out. Having looked at other people doing G-Lock, no one knows they've passed out. It's continuous. Ah, oh, something was a bit strange there. Yeah. Um, so no memory. That was the first to go. I take a few breaths. Uh, I pass out. Coming back up, uh, I have what is called myoclonic convulsions, which is a really fancy medical term for your muscles flap a bit. It's basically a minor epileptic fit. Apparently, about 70% of people who G-lock get that. Um, it's a textbook. It's absolutely textbook. And then, so, let's take a minute to come back on. I just sit there confused for a minute, wondering what's happened and why we're stopped. Everything was going fine. Why have we stopped? Why was everything wobbling? And then, Nick, uh, Nick the medical officer, comes on and says, oh, sorry. <laughs> he says, so, this was fighter pilot training. Wouldn't be going well. <laughs> oh, sorry, if this was fighter pilot selection, it, it wouldn't be going well. It's like, ah, ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> because, because even if that was, like, maybe that was a bad day. Maybe if I went in today, I could have pulled 4.5. No, but a bad day if you're a fighter pilot, you still have to yeah. fly the plane. If you, if, if on, if even, <laughs> I wasn't ill, so if it was a bad day, because uh, I know I haven't had much for breakfast or anything like that, but it doesn't matter. If, you, if in any circumstance you pass out at 3.6, you are not fighter pilot and you are not astronaut material. <laughs> and that is a harsh thing to... Like, I know in theory, I, I, like, my eyesight's not good enough for astronaut selection. Uh, I probably don't have the, the backgrounds required for everything. I don't know. But to actually get an F on the test <laughs> yes. is still brutal. <laughs> it's, it's one of those things where it's still a tiny dream. Mm -hmm. It's now you know it is an impossible yeah. dream, but it's still a dream. Yet now you have had a no. Yeah. <laughs> Someone has said no to your dreams. Um, 
There, there is a, a line in, I think it's, uh, yeah, it's Snow Crash by Neil Stevenson that says something like, until a man is like mid 30s, he, he believes that he could still be the baddest per most baddest person in the world. Hi, <laughs> I have just got the tick box. Like the, the theory is like, oh yeah, if, if, my, if my family was killed by ninjas, if, if I had to go and avenge a death of a while, like I could train, I could go off to, I could be the person going off to the monastery and become Batman. No. <laughs> no, nope, at some point that dream gets killed and that dream was killed in a centrifuge in Farnborough for me. But on the other <laughs> side of the scale, you're the kind of lucky bastard that gets to have a go on the kind of things that crushes your dreams, but also is very funny. <laughs> yeah. But the, the, you're, you're in other people's dreams having yours crushed. And it, wa <laughs> and it, wa <laughs> and it was fun. Like, it, despite everything, despite passing out, that was still a good experience. Yeah. And from a video perspective, like, either I needed to be really badass and pulling, like, the maximum they give me without a full air crew medical was 4.5. So either I need to be 4.5 and still doing my damn script to camera. Yeah. Or I need to pass out. Either one is a good punchline. And, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's <laughs> the one I got. Nothing's worth while if it hasn't got a punchline. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose if it was, yeah, it's fine. We probably wouldn't be here telling you about it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then they put uh, the person from Rolls-Royce in. She pulled 4.5 without much of a problem. Uh, then they <laughs> oh, put, there were more people there. Yeah, then they put the RAF uh, guy in and he pulled 6.5G with a G suit on uh, without passing out. And, yeah, I am not built for this, it turns out, which is, yeah. You say your, um, your G tolerance was low. Yeah. Can you, like, do workouts to make it better? Is, so, I assume that's innate per person because humans aren't really meant for it anyway. Yeah, according to, uh, to Nick, who we interviewed, it's basically innate. You can do certain things. Uh, I could build up cardio and make my heart uh, pump a little better. Uh, maybe that would pull me up a couple of G points. I could train the manoeuvres and maybe that would pull me up a whole G or something like that if I really knew how to strain and do it. But ultimately, yeah, <laughs> there's not much you can do about how that's it. It's it's a disqualifying thing for fighter pilots on the same thing as height is. Yeah. Your your system just isn't built for that. Cool. That's about it. That's about it. Uh, so we'll be back when we're back. <laughs> <laughs> as we said in the previous video, we are not doing this on a regular schedule anymore. Yes. Because it is too much effort. <laughs> <laughs> We've got something coming up soon, though. Oh yeah.